So here's the finished work, and um, this is what we'll be covering today in this video. And I just so this is um, a roller skating jam named Saturdays by Prince Paul. And I just found out some new information. I just posted a preview of this on Instagram, and I just found out that um, these the scratches in the song were actually sampled from an older classic by the um, the, the Fearless Four's 1983 single F. Four thousand. That's where he got it, right there. All right, boom. So this is a piece we're about to do for uh, all of the Scratch DJ students at the Leicestershire Hub of Music Schools. And yeah, so, you know, they're doing faderless scratches, so we're going to do a bunch of faderless scratches. And I, I chose a piece that I had never transcribed before called um, A Roller Skating Jam Named Saturdays by De La Soul. So this is a, um, a special piece that, that I'm transcribing um, uh, for the director of the program. We had a great, um, a great convo. And, uh, you know, so, so, so the kids are doing a lot of faderless stuff. So... This is going to be a faderless piece, so we're going to start to draw this. And I started out with this. I basically started out with this original sketch that I did really fast, but then I realized these weren't babies. It was going it's a lot more staccato, where it's going, you know. So I realized that these were actually like tears, where it's just like, and then a pause, and then, you know. So then I had to jot it down exactly. So this was my. Second kind of rendition. This was a third rendition, a little a jot sketch, and then uh, so yeah. So then from that, I came up with this with these right here. All right. So now we're just going to do a run through. So this is going v v v v v v v v v v, and it's just like that. So it's like All right. So there's only one real smooth kind of like natural kind of baby scratch in there. All the other all these other ones are kind of like a it's kind of like a staccato baby baby, but it's kind of like a tear. If you think about it, it's like a tear. So it's going foot 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 foot. Alright. So once again big shout out to all the, the, the turntablism students that are working hard and uh, on your on your uh, studies out there at the, the Leicestershire school system. Alright. And uh, this is DJ Radon, inventor of the turntablist transcription methodology that you see me using right now. All right, so we're going to get to this. So we're just going to go do some shortcuts. And a way to do some shortcuts are the, the same way that you would do any type of assembly line. I'm able to do shortcuts with this because this is just looped over and over. The, the scratch routine in this song is, is pretty much just a one bar loop. It's just going to. And then I count it how many times. The first time it appears, it appears about uh, 12 times. And the second time it appears four times. And the third time it appears six times. And then this last time it appears 15 times. So I'm going to draw all those in right now. All right. All right. So this is how easy it can all be. All right. So this first one is an even number. It's 12. All right. So I'm going to draw all these circles right here. So I'm going to... Do it assembly line style. They say assembly line style can be very helpful. Uh, they say George Washington Carver had a kind of an influence on, on Harry Ford uh, in the creation of the plant. They were good friends. And, you know, so when you're doing an assembly line, you're trying to go fast. You know, you do all the same things at the same time. So instead of just drawing this whole thing out a million times, I'm just going to do all of these things at once and I'm going to do lines kind of like how a computer or a, you know like a Xerox thing uh, you know prints things by lines or even how TV scan things by lines you know so it's a very popular system so I'm going to do it that way so here we go I'm just gonna these are all open fader symbols and open fader symbols are just used to denote where um, you know one scratch begins and another ends, so you notice how there's a there's there's basically a pause. Anytime the record the DJ holds the record, and they don't do anything, it's just going to be a, a horizontal line like this. 
so that the, so the DJ is holding it from this point to this point, and then they go again. They they push it forward right here on the one. So that's like one, two, three, four, and this is one whole bar. Let me make sure this is in the view of the screen. Yeah, it's in the view. All right. So boom. So I'm just gonna do all these little connecting bars right here in between. So I'm gonna do this line by line. All right. And technically, you don't even have to do these because it's just a rest, you know. But this is kind of like one big kind of tear uh, joined with the baby, series of tears and babies. So I'm not going to look at it. It's just a rest. So I'm going to give it these, you know, symbols and stuff, some open fader symbols. All right, we'll get some open fader symbols, more circles. Now, when you're using open fader symbols, it's kind of gratuitous, you know, um, it's, it's at your own discretion. It's really uh, to help you, you know, divide things. You really don't have to do these, but the reason I, ha I have open fader symbols is because it just helps, you know, see which, where one scratch ends and when another scratch starts. So we're just going to basically be copying the same um, loops, this, this, this is one bar, this is another bar of the same loop, and we're just going to be copying this the whole way. So you see I'm just kind of copying where all these things um, lie on the graph. All right, so remember this is a music score, but it's also a graph, because this is basically physics what we're doing. This is showing the physical movement of the cue point over time. And this is kind of what's happening to the cue point, where this is where the, the x-axis is time, and the, the y-axis is the degrees of the record, the change in the degrees of the record over time. <clears throat> so, got a bunch of little circles in, got a million more circles, so I'm going to start out with the circles first. You know, I'm talking about assembly line style, we're just going to start out with all the open fader symbols. Alright, I'm just going to copy from the line above it, and I'm going to go this way in this line, it's a lot easier. Alright, so these are all open fader symbols, you can see what I'm doing. All right. All right. So I'm going to like do these together kind of since they're like kind of together. That one circle is kind of big. These circles are way too big. And, you know, it's better to be a lot more mathematic versus being, uh, you know, symbolic. And like these are not O's. These are actually points. But points that are be represented as open points. All right. So since they're points, I'm just making them a little bit smaller. Probably have to sharpen my pencil some. All right. So I guess this is kind of like some Bob Ross of scratch kind of thing I'm doing right now. Getting these happy little open fader symbols. And uh, the kids at the Leicester Shire School are, are in their program, I, I believe it's a 10-day program, uh, um, 10 sessions, and uh, where they focus on fatal scratching. And I, I believe they're using PT-01 uh, portable faders, I mean, cross, you know, uh, you know portable, uh, you know, turntables that have the fader on it, I believe. Uh, but, you know, they're using portable setups. And uh, it's a very cool thing that they're doing. Let's see. All right, so I got all these. All right. All right, those, that circle could be a little bit smaller, but it'll have to do for now. Oops, I don't even need a circle right there. That's funny. And some of these other ones I might redo. Like this one just feels a little bit weird. This one's too big. So I'm kind of practicing little circles. All right. Probably redo that. One of those are kind of oblong. All right. So let's get some more circles in here. All right. 
So this was actually a tricky uh, score to, to, to notate because the thing is, is that, you know, it seems like it was simple. Like at first I thought he was just baby scratching. I thought he was just going, but it wasn't smooth. It was, he was going, you know, so that's what the, the trickiest part was, getting that timing right. But yeah, so I'll I'll be doing an animated version of this as well in the future, you know, as I've done in the past with any many other uh, routines from uh, classic turntablist compositions from over the years. And you might want to check those out on YouTube. Some of them are like Portishead. Uh, I think I believe I did Only You and uh, maybe like Diggable Planets. Um, and we did. Uh, I guess like Mr. Wazo, Analog Worms, a couple of Premier, DJ Premier, uh, like uh, notations. We're definitely going to do Dwick in the future. It's one of my favorite uh, scratch songs, is Dwick, that nice and smooth, and a Gangstar collaboration. Yep, and we're also going to be focusing on, uh, as we go into this next decade, we're going to be doing a lot more um, scratching and rapping, and backspinning and juggling and stuff too. So I'm about to start competing in DMC again. I stopped in the, about year 2002. Um, I'm about to start up again. My scratches are where I want them to be. Now I'm just going to be focusing on Keeping a lot of my scratches sharp, um, adding some uh, maybe like uh, you know fast transform styles uh, to my scratch repertoire is what I, I don't really have right now. Like a lot of the Oslo flow kind of styles that they're doing a lot. I really like what those guys are doing. Shout out to them. And shout out to Cut and Paste in general uh, for all the kids at the um, Leicester Shire School. There's a cool label um, in your country called uh, Cut and Paste Records, and they have a lot of great tools for you to get for for um, all of y'all to get, and and uh, I'd highly suggest them. You know, they've got a lot of great tools for turntablists, and that their records are made specifically for turntablists. Because a lot of times, you know, sometimes battle battle records are, are are kind of random. You know, kind of like sound effects records, but these records are go beyond what sound effects records do in that they're actually um, you know designed for turntablists and I believe you all are using some records in your class that are designed for the class which is really cool it's a very great um, it's really just great to see turntablism in schools because we uh, you guys are very lucky we don't have that in in the US yet you know we have small programs but not in actual public public schools you know, we have like one-off programs that might last a year or two or something like that, but not an actual, you know, cur curriculum. Um, you know, it's usually just random schools here and there. Uh, I actually taught at a, a turntablism and, and beat making class at a school called Robert Wagner in Long Island City way back in the early 2000s, almost 20 years ago. Maybe like 18 years ago or something like that, 17 years ago. And one of my students was actually uh, Shane Oliver, who many of you may know as uh, the creator of Hood by Air. And uh, shout out to Shane and the whole HBA camp. So anytime you see somebody wearing uh, something that says HBA, that's Hood by Air. So yeah, he was one of my former students. He was actually very advanced in the class. He was uh, I was teaching the class Fruity Loops. And, you know, I didn't even have to show him how to do it. He just automatically started making some crazy, crazy beats. And, uh, yeah, so he's, a, you know, a genius in multiple, multiple fields. You know, he DJs as well. As do many artists today. You know, so the, um, and, you know, I, I do stress to that, you know, DJing is an instrument that can uh, help you understand other instruments and understand music better. And, you know, you can incorporate 
DJing into to pretty much any genre. There's, there's DJs in all types of bands. Alright. So we're getting through this. Oh, whoops, I'm putting ones where I don't need them. That's what happens when you do the assembly line kind of thing. Sometimes uh, you uh, add things where you don't need them. So really, I don't need anything right here on this whole row. Neither in this whole row either. I added these while I was talking. All right, so this is the first verse. Of the first time these scratchers appear, they appear 12 times, and the second time they appear four times. The next time in the song they appear uh, six times, and by times I mean bars, six bars. And then this is 15 bars. Actually, I don't need this last one because it's actually 15. So this is eight rows. So that's 16 bars. So this is all math. You know, I'm, I'm doing this all by math. I, when I, I counted them in the song, and I, and I counted like, okay, boom, there was 12 consecutive bars, and I counted four consecutive bars, six consecutive bars, and then 15 consecutive bars. So that's what these, these are. It's 12, four, six, and then 15. So, yeah. So that's why I erased this last one, because this that would be 16, and we don't need that. All right, so it looks like we've got pretty much all the circles there. Oh, except these circles. We've got a bunch more circles over here that we didn't do. So let's add these in. And these open fader symbols are happening right at the starting point of the record. So the starting, so you can look at the sound as being uh, on this axis right here. I'll just write it like this. You know, right like that. You can see. So that's the axis, and the sound is basically is basically going like, um, ro you know. So that's the sound right there, and so the sound is going forward, and the sound is going backwards, forward, backwards, like that. That's basically how TTM works. Where forward slope is going upwards. I mean, upward slope is going forward, so it's going forward, and this is backwards, and this is a pause in the middle, so it's forward, pause for a second, and then backwards. And these, and you can see these are quarter notes where it's going one, two, three, four. All right. So then half of a quarter note, you know, is going to be, um, it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the eighth note. And then half of that is going to be a sixteenth note, like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. And then the half of that is going to be a thirty second note. All right. So these. These notes in here, you can see that this is the quarter note here, and then this is the eighth note here, and then this is the sixteenth note. All these little small squares that you might not be able to see in here, but there's these little squares here, the gridded paper. It, these are all these are sixteenth notes, and that's why I chose to draw this scratch at this particular range where there's a bar, um, two bars for every line, it's just because so each m movement is a sixteenth note where it's going. Rrr. That's one sixteenth note, and then it pauses for a sixteenth note, then it reverses for a sixteenth note, then there's a rest for a sixteenth note, and then this, then a forward for a sixteenth note, then a rest for a sixteenth note, and a reverse for a sixteenth note. So it's a very cool pattern that, that Prince Paul created. So this is a, this is a uh, I'm transcribing this piece, but this piece was you know not designed by me. This is by Prince Paul, the producer of the De La Soul song a roller skating jam named Saturdays. All right, and I'll write that down. So I'm gonna write uh, Prince Paul. I'm gonna write De La Soul Put the little circle there. Prince Paul, um, and I'm going to write a roller skating jam. Mm -hmm. 
named Saturdays. All right, and this is going to be uh, um, scratches or say cuts. So this is the notation of the scratches. So this is a scratch score for that particular piece. All right. And we're going to finish up these circles down here. Some happy circles. All right. So, you know, over these past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of stuff in pen. And as you can see, you know, when you're drawing in pen and you make a mistake, you can't erase it. And it also makes you kind of go slower because you're afraid to make mistakes. And I've been really freed up now that I've been using pencil again. And uh, so I'm not worried about making mistakes. And if I do, I can just erase it like right here. Um, but using pen is good if you're trying to kind of force yourself to learn how to draw. Um, which I was doing a lot of training over the past couple of years. Uh, let's see. Now let's look at this. So I'm going to add a bunch of circles here. Going to make sure they line up with the master ones at the top. All right, because these are all permutations of this original one. We're just going to copy from this top row, this top row right here. All right, so let's see. Let's keep adding some circles over here. All right. So yeah, this is a great piece to uh, to try to do. I would say this is a good piece for people that are beginning and people that are advanced too. Because faderless cuts are the core cuts. You know, with the, you know, without the cross fader, is is where the the real rhythm comes from. And you know, all this was invented by Grand Wizard Theodore, and he was scratching in his uh, studio. And uh, you know, he was a youth as well. He was, you know, his mom was. The story goes as he tells it is that his mom was telling him to like turn the music down, and he was talking to her, and he just started doing the rub scratch or the baby scratch, as some people call it, and he just started going back and forth, going do it, do it, do it. And he's like, wow, that sounds kind of hot. And he started showing his friends, his other homie DJs, you know, show Grandmaster Flash, and then the rest is history. All right, so I think we got all the um, the circles in here. Looks like we got all the circles. All right, so maybe we're going to do this uh, assembly line style. So we're just going to do this first character over and over again. And so you notice it's going forward, and it's got a flat top, and then it goes down, so... I'm just going to draw that over and over and over again. And and this forward is a, it's a 16th note, and then it stops, and then it goes down like that. All right. I'll do that again. So forward, and then right here, and then down like that. All right. Now the same thing. I'm going to keep doing that over and over. And this one is going to be a little bit smaller. This other one I went a little bit too far. But this is all very minute stuff. All right. Now this top is a little bit slanted, so I'm going to make it a little bit more straight. Whoops. Sometimes it's better to do the whole thing in one swoop. Probably what I'm going to have to do than to try to like add to a line. Good, like that, perfect. Nice, a little bit flatter of a top. So I'm gonna focus on making the top nice and flat. All right, so we got those, all right. Make this one a little bit darker. Like that. You see, and I'm going to draw these lines in here. Alright, so I'm going to draw those lines in there. See that? Alright, we can go 
start on this one. That should be fast, I think it's by the end of this. Alright. Alright. I'm just going to do this whole row right here. Now. All right, this one I can redo. This one, that line isn't that great. Be a little bit better, a little bit straighter. Because in this song, he's going, you know, he's not going, he's just going, all right. Now, um, let's draw these in here. So these are the connector lines that connects it to the next phrase, where he's just pausing it for a moment. So this is a pause symbol in TTM, these little barbells that I'm drawing. All right, like that. A little pause, just for 16th note, 16th note pause. No, this one looks like it's a closed fader, so I'm going to erase that and make the circle a little bit better. All right, like that. And now I'm going to draw the rest of these in. All right. So I'm going to turn this a little bit more so it's easier for me to see it and draw at this angle. Oh, I put that top could be a little bit straighter. All right. Oh, well, there must be something on the paper underneath. How can you do that? Sometimes you can have something underneath the paper that makes you draw a bad line. All right. Oops. All right. That line, the top could be better, but I'll go back at the end. Change tops if I have to. All right, but in actual practice, you know, sometimes even when somebody's pausing it, they're not holding it exactly perfect. So it doesn't have to be a perfect line at the top. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Just as like generally flat. All right. This one could be better. And maybe this one could be better at the top. All right, so nice and straight. These are all kind of straight. Just focusing on having kind of straight lines. Uh, this one maybe could be fixed a little bit. Oops. All right. Okay. So now we're going to go to the next one. So. You see why I'm doing this assembly line style, it's a lot easier. So I'm just going to keep doing the same thing, same pattern over and over. This one. It's going four for 16th note, pause for 16th note, and then reverse for 16th note. And this is forward, pause, reverse. This is forward, pause, reverse. All right, this is forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. Oops, that was kind of wavy, that line. There should be no waviness in this. Something's underneath there, maybe. I got it thick enough, you can't see it. All right, now this is another one. I'm going 
forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, all right, forward, pause, reverse. You see why it's easier where I drew these circles first. If I didn't have the open fader symbols, it'd be a lot harder to do everything that I'm doing right now. Uh, this thing could be better right there. All right, and these could be a little bit bolder. All right. And this one right here. All right, like that. Let's make this look a little bit cleaner. Good, that's much better. All right. So this is forward, 16th note, pause the 16th note, and then reverse the 16th note. All right, and that's forward, pause, and then reverse. All right, same thing, over and over, forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. And then over, forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. All right, over and over. Down here, so forward, pause, reverse. And forward, pause, reverse. Kind of looks like an R in cursive. Especially when I swoop a little bit. Don't like that. All right. So we got those, that line. All right. So you see this is kind of a task right here. Let's, um, let's, let's do these baby scratches or the rub scratches. This is the main scratch we know, uh, you know, Theodore for. But, you know, he's invented a lot of different scratches. Um, all right. So this baby scratch is just going to be a lot more smooth there. It's going up, forward, and back. Forward and back. That one was a little bit shaky. But this should look like a nice bell curve. Alright. It can be sharp at the top or it could be smooth depending on the DJ. But usually it's going to be a little bit smoother when it's a baby scratch like this. Alright, so this one was a little bit off. So I'm going to redo that. Alright. It's kind of bulky at the top right there, so just go that again. Like that. Good, there we go, we got that. All right, and maybe we'll add that same one over here on this line. We get to do a bunch of baby scratches as drawings, and then everything else is just going to be downhill. It's just going to be more of the, uh, the kind of um, staccato kind of babies, the kind of tears. All right. And the same thing over and over. Just going forward and then back. All right. Make sure that it's in the right section. It should be at the end of the third count. All right. Yes, it is. All right. So this is the piece. And Prince Paul, that did these scratches, and he produced the song as well, I definitely recommend to go check out his stuff, um, his, his full catalog. You know, his work with De La Soul is amazing, but you know, he's also got work with a lot of different artists, uh, a lot of different names, one being a Handsome Boy Modeling School, a project he did with uh, Dan the Automator from uh, the same guy that did the Gorillaz. Um, so it, they did a collab project called Handsome Boy Modeling School, so definitely check that out. Um, you can also check out, you know, a lot of his other work, you know, his early stuff in Stetsasonic. But you know, Prince Paul is definitely one of my favorite producers and favorite turntablists in general. All right, so we're gonna end off this pattern with another uh, one of these forward for 16th note rest, 
reversed. So forward, rest, reverse. All right, and notice this top is a little bit uneven. Forward, rest, reverse. All right, forward, rest, reverse. Forward, rest, reverse. Forward, rest, reverse. That one's that one's a little shaky. So forward, rest, reverse. All right, forward, rest, reverse. Forward, rest, reverse. All right, and these lines don't even look like open faders; they look like dots. So I'm gonna make these a little bit more like an open fader. Maybe this line can have a little bit more structure, like that, make it, all right, so forward, rest, reverse, all right, this is forward, rest, reverse, like that, so maybe I'll start going over them twice, just so it's a little bit more Solid. Forward, rest, reverse. All right, that one's a little bit too much over there. A little bit more cleaner. All right, that's fine for now. It looks a little 3D right there. And we do have 3D TTM, and I'll talk about that in some other lectures, but 3D TTM is just adding another parameter to this, adding a Z-axis. Because right now we're just dealing with the x and y axis, which is this, the rotation of the record over time. But you can add another axis to this. So forward, rest, forward. So this is the v v v. So the v v v. The v v v. v. All right. So it's going the v v v. So the v v v. All right. All right, and then we're gonna go reverse, and then once again, forward, pause, reverse, then forward, pause, reverse. All right, and once again, forward, pause, reverse. All right, so we got that line. Now I'm gonna do all these connector bars. Just gonna connect these right here, connect this to the end. You know, there's those little, little tiny open fader symbols I have. You know, I designed this paper as well. And uh, notice that, you know, you can just connect them like that. That's why I made them there for. So it's a lot of little connectors. Little nodes. You can make everything, make the compositions much easier. But you can also use this paper for, for rap as well, for lyrical transcription methodology. And I'll be focusing on that uh, a lot in the future too. Like I was saying before, um, we're going to be focusing on lyrical structure as well. All right. Uh, this next one is going to be another one of these. Uh, now let me do all these little, some more barbell ones, these little pauses. All these pauses. All right. Pauses, pauses, pauses. That last one kind of turned to a closed fader. Don't want people to think it's a closed fader. All right, so let's just draw these in here. I'm just going to draw these first. All right. That one. So forward, pause, reverse. 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 All right. Forward, pause, reverse. All right. Forward, pause, reverse. And the cool thing is the way that Prince Paul made this in the song is he made it as like a beat element. You know, a lot of his his beats in that in that era were actually made 
in kind of a turntablist fashion like this where maybe he was looping some break with his you know tables and then he made it part of the song or you know he made scratchings as part of the chorus like it's just a really amazing album so forward pause reverse forward pause reverse forward pause reverse we're gonna go over that twice all right forward pause reverse forward pause reverse that one's a little bit too thick right there and i was just doing a, a lecture about a, a great um turntablist composer named uh clay from uh italy and you know he was using ttm and uh adding some like um boldness to some lines as an accent. I think that's a really cool, cool idea. You know, I've, I've uh, experimented with a lot of different, um, d different ways of uh, visualizing TTM and thickness of uh, lines representing different things. Um, it's really cool that this, this fader that came out a couple years ago that um, these guys, they made this like effect cap you could put on a fader and if you squeeze the fader, it controlled another like MIDI parameter, which I thought was really cool. Um, I haven't really seen people using it, but I know it's out there, and I think it's a very, very cool invention to actually have a, a fader cap, you know, something that you can put on your fader, and it's like a just an extra parameter. You know, you can actually, um, you, know, you can scratch, and then you can, while you're scratching, you can control something else just by squeezing the cross fader. All right, so we got that whole line, got that row, and we're going to do that again. A whole other one, we're going to copy this one right here. We're almost done. We just got this line, this line, and, and this line. So maybe we'll get these over here so we can be done with this whole row. All right, so once again, we're going, um, we're going forward, hold, reverse. So forward for a 16th note, hold, 16th note, reverse, 16th note. Oops, that one's kind of thick. We do that, so we're gonna keep going like this. All right, like that. All right. Now we're gonna keep conjoining, joining these right there. All right, there we're joining these together. These are continuous fatal scratch cuts. All right. And I heard that the um, Lesser Shire School is actually, um, you know having the, the students uh, make their own routines, which is really cool. To, and just seeing kids, you know, draw their own scores, you know, it's just really, really amazing, really heartwarming. You know, I've been working on this, you know, system I've created for the past, you know, 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's definitely my life's work. And to see my life's work in uh, the public school system is, um, you know, very, very heartwarming to say the least. So, you know, hopefully other schools around the, the world can uh, catch on because, you know, mathematics is always going to help people learn and music is always going to help people learn better. You know, there's been a lot of studies and they've proven that, you know, music, uh, music studies help, um, help students in their other classes. It helps in developing the brain in general. You know, the, uh, music is a type of intelligence that you know um, studies have shown that need to be cultivated all right so giving a mini lecture within this drawing all right so you see i'm almost there so you see how i'm just doing this kind of assembly line style where i'm just looking at the, the pieces on a very kind of micro level i'm not just writing the piece over and over again because it's just looped over and over as a production element. And I'm sure in the future I might come back to this piece and you know write some of the other production elements. Um, but uh, for now, um, we're just doing this. But yep, forward, pause, reverse. Same thing, same old, same old. Forward, pause, reverse. 
All right, that line was kind of long, but forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse. All right, and then another one. Forward, pause, reverse. All right. And then that's it for that line. This could be a little bit bolder, more bold. This line's kind of bold. Let's make it a little bit more, less, little bit less bold, a little bit more uniform, but uh, let's see, it could be a little bit clearer. Hmm. All right, so now we just got one last line of these. Um, and then these are the last of these little bar here, these little pauses. So I'm going to add these in. All right. So we're adding all of these. So yeah, this is, uh, they call this operations management. I took a class on this back in the day, you know, not a art class, but a, you know, like business operations management. If you, if somebody has to, you know, put together a TV or a billion things, they're not just putting together a TV and then making another TV. They're, they're using an assembly line and they're just doing the same thing over and over again because you can do that faster than if I had, was trying to write this whole thing, write it over and over. It's faster the way that I'm doing it right now. All right. So. Once again, we're gonna do the same motion over and over. So it's gonna go, let's put this behind it perfectly so it's not, not even. All right, so it's going forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, Reverse, forward, pause, reverse. All right, forward, pause, reverse. Do that again a second time. All right, forward, pause, reverse. All right, I'm gonna go reverse, for pause, forward. That one look weird too, look at that. I'm gonna erase that one. Yeah, I don't like how this one looks either. Be better than that. All right, and this could be a better circle too. All right, so forward, pause, reverse. All right, circle's fine. So forward, we reverse. Forward, pause. There we go. All right, maybe this all comes off the top right there. All right. Good, like that. All right. And forward, pause, reverse. Forward, pause, reverse. Oh, this looks a little different. Let's flatten this top out a little bit. All right. Forward, pause, reverse. All right, over and over. But I'm almost there. I'm gonna start just going a little bit faster. Whoever's reading this can get the drift of the piece. Okay, because it's over and over again. Not a lot of mystery. All right, so it's very robotic looking. Because it's like, and that's the cool thing, because it's like, this is the actual fourth dimensional path of the cross, uh, of the, the, the cue point. So TTM is actually fourth dimensional notation, it's, it's looking at the change in the cue point over time. 
So, so um, you know, you might want to look up, uh, you know, the fourth dimension. And, you know, generally people, when they're speaking of the fourth dimension, they're just talking about time. All right, so moving this, let's see, so forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, forward, pause, reverse, all right, forward, pause, reverse, so these are all trapezoids, basically, and this is almost like a, it's like a trapezoid baby, or trapezoid rub, maybe we could call these or something, you know, because it's basically just a trapezoid shape, and this is like a trapezoidal rub, we call it a trap rub, for short. That's in my mathematics, back in trap, because, you know, trap is actually a very, very mathematic uh, form of uh, beat production, and, uh, I mean, all music is mathematic, but trap is very mathematic as far as the drum rolls and the, you know, the 32nd note um, stuff, and even just the triplet rhyming styles. I'm actually going to be releasing a series of... Uh, um, rap tutorials, and in some of those tutorials, they're going to be named uh, in defense of mumble rap, because I personally think mumble rap, um, on a pattern level, not necessarily a content level, but on a pattern level, you know, uh, mumble rap is very, very progressive as far as the patterns. A lot of the patterns developed by, like, you know, Twista and uh, people like, you know, Freestyle Fellowship and people like, um, um, you know, just, you know, even from Freestyle Fellowship Camp, just AC Lone and the whole Project Bloat and, and, and that whole camp. But also on the Midwest, you know, like Tech 9 I feel like Tech 9s you know, um, we're going to focus on his patterns in the future too. So a lot of uh, mumble rap is based on a lot of, you know, patterns that he explored, you know, in the 90s, early 2000s. He explored a long time ago. Make this one look, look a little bit better. Not loving how it looks. Make it a little bit more mathematic. This is all math. I mean, obviously, math and music and science all overlap, but this is literal. Uh, these are all equations, these are all functions. And these all have an actual uh, have a graph, you know. I mean, these are graphs, but these all have an actual. Uh, what I mean to say is the actual uh, physical uh, function, like the actual um, set of numbers and characters that can represent this with mathematics. So an actual equation. So these are all functions and they have equations. All right. So hopefully one day this will be taught as a math course as well. You'll be able to get math credits from TTM. Definitely happen one day. And uh, let's see. All right, we're almost there. In reverse. We're almost there. Look at that. Forward. Pause. Reverse. And then one more time. Forward. Pause. Reverse. I think that's it. Are we done? Let's see. Let's check over. Review. That's it. We did it. Maybe this could be, yeah, everything is, let's see. Cross the T's, dot the I's. All right, that looks like it's done. All right, this one could be a little bit more open fittery. All right. So yeah, we're done, look at that. See, I had made some mistakes here. Added those there, and I didn't need to erase those. You can see the kind of ghost structure of that. So yeah, this is this is going. So it's going one, two, three, four. All right. So so this is De La Soul and Prince Paul's a roller skating jam named Saturdays. 
and these are the cuts all right and uh let me see i'm gonna sign down here so transcribed DJ Radon. Some black dots. All right, there we go. Transfer where DJ Radon. Um, and this is we're at eleven, eleven, and nineteen. 11, 11, magic number. All right, so um, here we go. So let's look. Let's take a look at this review. Is there anything we can fix in here? We got all the connector things in place. All the connectors are connected. This one could be connected a little bit better. Oh, it's kind of thick. It's too thick. Let's see. All right. Um, let's see, yeah, everything is fine, it's close enough, um, let's see, all right, now this could be a little bit darker, all right. So here we go. We got the we got the whole thing. So I'm gonna write in here. I'm gonna write this is uh, um, section one. I'm gonna write section. So I'm gonna write, maybe start over here. Section number one, section number two, section number three, and section number four. All right. And that's it. So, and these are verses that happen, I think, like in between these. All right, so it's like a it's, it's scratch, it's like intro, then scratches, and a verse, and some scratches. It's like these are all bridges. These scratches are kind of like bridges. They're like part of the chorus, but you know, they, they get really long. Like this one is super long. All right, so we got that right there. All right, so that's the whole piece right there, and we're done. Let's see. Anything else we can add this to be to be more clear? Uh, maybe we'll um, add the beats per minute of the song, and something like that maybe. Uh, but I'll find that out later. I'll add that. All right, and we're done. And this is the finished piece. So to go look up F four thousand. So this sample basically right here. I'm going to write that in here. This sample. I'm going to draw. This is a classic thing. So this, I'm going to write sample by the Fearless Four. The Fearless Four nineteen eighty three single 
and it is called F4000. So this is where it originally comes from. It comes from the Fearless Force 1983 single F4000. All right. So that's some hip hop history right there. So I had no idea that Prince Paul was actually sampling scratches. So that's that's really sick like concept. Sick concept to you know use sam sam sample somebody's scratches and flip it in a new song. All right. So this is a roller skating jam named Saturdays, and the original sample where Prince Paul got the scratches from is. The Fearless Fours, 1983 single, F4000. So look that up, F4000, The Fearless Four. And uh, I've been told that the DJs in that group were, uh, DJs were OC and Crazy Eddie. I'm going to write that. I'm going to put DJs OC and... Crazy Eddie, spelled like the store. I'm gonna write that down. O C N Crazy Eddie. Alright. So those are the DJs, O C and Crazy Eddie. Alright, so we're gonna play a little snippet of where Prince Paul got the actual uh, sample from in a roller skating jam named Saturdays. So I originally thought it was him scratching since he is a, a scratch DJ, but he actually sampled it from this song, the Fearless Fours um, F4000. So we're going to play that, Fearless Fours F4000. And you can find that on YouTube, Fearless Four F4000. So we're going to play it. All right. <laughs> That's where he got it right there. And that breakdown. Let's take it back. So it's right at three twenty seven, three minutes and twenty seven seconds. Shout out to Shuggy Shug in the building for figuring out that, uh, you know, that this song actually looped uh, the F4000 loop from the Fearless Four. All right. Shout out to Shuggy Shug in the building. All right. Big up to, you know, Michael Shug McGee for figuring that out. Peace.